Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm checking out a 2019 Ford Mustang GT Premium. This vehicle is sitting on a set of Michelin tires, summer tires, 255 40s in the front and 275 40s in the back. Wrapped around 19 inch alloy wheels and a gloss black finish. It also has high performance Brembo braking system with four wheel disc brakes, ventilated disc rotors on all four wheels. The name of this color is Ruby Red Metallic. Really stunning. Hopefully the camera does it justice because this is one of the best red colors I've seen. Really enjoy the way it looks. Okay, so here in the front, have a lot of gloss black here in the grill around the chrome Mustang. Then the bottom portion is flat black with the body, body colored portion there. All the exterior lighting on this vehicle is powered by LEDs. Your headlights are in a projector tube for your low and your high beams. Then you have an LED daytime running light, turn signal, side marker and fog lights. Now, if you want to get into serious in-depth look at the lighting and interior exterior lighting of this vehicle check out my channel i have a night video and i'll put a link in the description of this video so you can check it out looking at the profile most everything is body colored the handles the side mirrors pillars and all that except for the wheels they're gloss black and then you have this portion right here kind of continuing in uh, on with the the front lip spoiler splitter and then it comes in here with a gloss black as well and continues there in the back then you have that 5.0 liter badging there on the side very iconic this is what the key looks like it's a proximity key system and this key is kind of heavy it has a little bit of a weight to it but it is rounded off so you can slip it in and out of your pocket fairly easy there is a physical key on the inside by pushing that button you can slide out a physical key here but generally, you could just keep this in your pocket and use the vehicle 100%. It's very easy to use uh, without taking the key out of your pocket. Now, it does have, have the ability to unlock the trunk, lock and unlock the doors there, and a panic button. So let's go ahead and push that. So it just beeps the horn, flashes the lights. Now, as long as you have this key with you, it can be in your pocket, in a bag, as long as it's with you, and it's a within a, just a few feet of this door. You can walk up and lock the doors by placing your hand or finger over the sensor right here indicated by these lines. So if you put your finger over that, it will lock the doors. To unlock it, now this is super fast. You just simply put your hand behind the handle. As soon as it senses your hand, it immediately unlocks the door. This is much faster than a lot of vehicles I've seen with this type of system. It senses your hand and immediately unlocks the door so you don't have to wait. So it's raining or whatever and you wanna get in the car fast, very fast to get in and out of the vehicle. There's a physical key location here on the driver's side only. You have to take this cover off to access it. The inside of the passenger side door, mostly black. You do have some chrome there, matte chrome, and that red line down the center looking really nice, matching the seats and the outside of the vehicle. You can also adjust the ambient light, and I'll show you, I'll show you that in the night video. That's really cool, so you check that out. The soft touch surfaces, basically everything above uh, this line here. So soft touch for your armrest around your arm. This part down here is hard touch. Then you have the red line is soft, soft, and soft. Has a little bit of a stitching around that line as well. This is, this passes through down into that compartment. So you can't use that for a uh, storage space or anything but down here uh, you can there's no really like a bottle holder here in the door but you can just kind of squeeze a bottle in there but I guess you could stand something tall up here like so like that but uh, it's there's a little pocket anyway really good sound system you have some speakers here here and here and uh, really good. Now, of course, the exhaust is so awesome that you probably don't want to listen to the music too much. You want to hear the exhaust. But you have an illuminated Mustang threshold sill plate. You can see that in the night video. 
manually adjusted seats. Now that's that's a positive in my book, manually adjusted for the driver and passenger. These are Recaro seats and they have very heavy bolstering. So they're a little bit too small for my particular tastes, but you know, it depends on the person, I guess. So these are the upgraded Recaro seats. And there's your leg room. Plenty of leg room here in the front. It's the back that's limited on leg room. Has some stitching there on the side of the center console. Then you have like this uh, swirled aluminum type design here. Hard touch surfaces on the, on the bottom and then soft touch here at the top with the stitching. And you have the Mustang name. Lockable glove compartment. Smooth plastic on the inside. The seats look fantastic. There's just really heavy bolstering, so it's a little bit of a pain to get in and out. Once you're in place, I think most people would be very comfortable and uh, solid in the seat. Me personally, the side bolsters on the back is just a little bit too tight for my rib cage, but that's just me. With the seat in my normal driving position, you can see there's like no leg room for the rear passengers. So you can see from this angle that you can put a car seat back here, but if you have anybody back here with legs, then you're gonna need uh, to compromise some leg room in the front for sure. Really like the contours of this car. Fantastic looking vehicle. So looking at the back here, starting with the top, you can see it's uh, dished out a little bit in the very top. Now the headroom is fantastic. So that little dipping in the middle is no big deal. And they have a little antenna right there, a little bump antenna. Third brake light is here at the top. And then you have the spoiler looking nice and it's attached in four places. It doesn't look too ridiculous. It, it's a really nice looking integrated factory spoiler. Now the backup camera is in the perfect position in my opinion. Very high center position right here and it's integrated into this black. I think that's the perfect place in the, on this particular car to have it. You have the big GT in the middle. Parking sensors across the back and of course you have the really nice big quad exhaust for the true dual exhaust on this vehicle. Sounds amazing. It's customizable as well. So LED turn signals, backup, the, the actual backup light is right in here, reverse light. And then the turn signals are actually uh, animated and the flashers are not. So it's pretty cool. And you can check all that out on my night video. I think it really looks nice. Opening up the trunk, you can of course use the key or you can push this button under here. It's right in there, you push that and it releases it here. Now, there's a small place where you can put your hand and it's really easy to miss that place, especially at night and your hand goes up in this area. And I don't know if you can notice, this is a gloss uh, black plastic here. So as you miss the place, let's say you're not paying attention or whatever, then your fingernails or rings or whatever can scratch that gloss black plastic here. So that's a common, it's a common issue on vehicles, but I just want to point that out. Uh, my vehicle, I have a Challenger and it has the same problem where there's gloss black right where you put your hands. So there might be a way of solving that problem. There's the underside of the, the trunk. It does have an emergency release. The opening isn't all that big, but the trunk space is big. So the opening is limited. Uh, you can actually put more in the trunk if, but you just, if the opening was a little bit bigger, but this vehicle isn't a, a big family vehicle. But it has plenty of trunk space overall. Now there is some exposed metal, exposed speakers and wires and stuff under here. Deep in there, you can fold the seats down to add to your cargo space when needed. So that's handy. Under here is 
you can either have a spare tire or you can have a tire inflator kit. So this one has the tire inflator kit without the spare tire. Me personally, I prefer the spare tire. Fuel door is here on the driver's side and it's a capless design. So you open the door and that's all you have to do. You can pump gas without using a gas cap or anything like that. Now you all you need, to, you need to use a funnel if you want to use a gas can. But other than that, it's fairly easy to pump gas in it. As long as you have the key inside the vehicle, you start it up, you push the clutch, the brake, and you push this button. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice the floor mat hooks in place or snaps in place here and here, unlike the other side. So this keeps the floor mat in place and it doesn't interfere with your accelerator and brake pedal and clutch pedal here. And you have the raised rubber aluminum pedals looking nice. Then you have a footrest here on the far left, right in here. So let's take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there's a latch a little bit to the left here of center. So there's your center line. Just reach in a little bit to the left, move it over, and you can lift it up. So you can see it's actually yellow, so you can see it a little bit. Now it does require a prop to hold it up. There's the prop here, and you swing it up, and it goes right there to that arrow. Underside of the hood is insulated. And you notice these little vents right here. You see those on that side? That's where some air can go pass through and get sucked out of the engine bay for cooling and stuff. So check it out. They put this huge plastic cover to block your view. They know you lift the hood, you want to see the engine, and they're like, hey, you can't see the engine. We've got to cover it up with a big plastic cover. I don't know what the deal is with that trend. But anyways, they do have this nice crossbar connecting strut tires together with the Mustang GT name in it looking pretty nice and then he has a 5.0 liter on the plastic cover powered by ford and this is can't be a coincidence where they put this made in usa real big right there on the uh on the intake air The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. You have your door lock controls there, power windows, one touch up and down. Nice and smooth and fast. And you have your turn to, yeah, side mirror adjustments here. You just pick a side and adjust it with that little pad. On the side mirror is your blind spot detection system. This is for your rear cross traffic alert and your blind spot indicator. It will illuminate the appropriate side if there's a vehicle in your way. Illuminated seal plate here on the driver's side as well. Don't forget, check out my night video. Now the driver's side, usually with the controls and everything, the driver's side seat one ups the passenger and this is no different. Now it is a manual seat, but it does have the height adjustment, which the passenger side does not have. Really impressive looking seats. The Recaros are nice looking. Look like a really nice racing seat. But of course, it's one of those things where you have to make sure that it works for you. So make sure you sit in one really good for an extended period of time before you make that decision to upgrade. To the left of the steering column is your headlight switch. So you have an automatic headlights on, parking light and off. Fog lights can be controlled here. And then you have a dimmer switch for your interior gauges and the ability to pop the trunk here. Has a tilt and a telescoping steering column and the lever for it is way here on the right side. Sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. I have the seat all the way back, all the way down. I'm six feet tall. Just to give you an idea of the knee room, this is fantastic, leg room is good. This is too far back for me to sit and actually drive safely, um, but yeah. You see how that contours away from my knee and leg. Everything about that particular thing is great. The leg room and all that's perfect. The steering wheel, the way it feels is near perfect. It's soft to the touch, has a good thickness. 
it grips your hand there's nothing slipping or anything like that it has some slight bolsters here nothing too fancy about it just a really good quality feeling steering wheel leather wrapped and feels good in the hand uh, there's some buttons here on the steering wheel so you have your volume for your radio you can mute the radio you can change the, your tracks uh, for your radio um, whether they be uh, an audio track off of a device uh, or your radio stations, that kind of thing. Down here is your cruise control. Uh, now, it's kind of strange, and it could be that I'm not used to it yet, but you have to reach over some buttons to reach other buttons. It's a little weird. I have to kind of, you know, loosen my grip from the steering wheel. I have to fo sometimes focus, all, distract my attention off the road to make sure I'm pushing the right button. It could be that I'm just new to this particular thing, maybe that people get used to it after a while, but I thought that was kind of strange that you have to reach over buttons to get other buttons. Same thing over here. Now these buttons on the right side, they correspond with a screen between the gauges. You have voice recognition system here. Uh, this button has gauges related, and then you can go to your radio, your navigation, your phone, settings, and then hang up on your phone there. So these are toggle here, navigation, settings and then hang out. Windshield wiper controls are here. On the left side is your turn signal indicator and your high beam controls. And this right here is fantastic. I think these gauges, another thing that's near perfect about this vehicle is the gauges. So they're highly customized. It's all one big screen. So you can see it's just a screen, so everything can be changed. Um, right now it shows a big digital speedometer as well as a regular speedometer and shows you what gear you're in. I think that's fantastic. And your RPMs are there. You have your engine cool and temperature, your fuel gauge, miles to empty, your odometer. This is showing your fuel economy here, what's playing on your radio, uh, digital compass, outside temperature. You have a lot of information right here. So you notice portions of this, if you check out my night video, I'll explain this in more detail, but portions of this that are green, well, you can customize that color, color of the gauges here in the center and the, the ambient lighting and all that stuff. So you can actually go through and customize the colors in the vehicle. It's really, really cool. Um, but also just the way the gauges and everything, the layout of everything. So if I change the drive mode here, so we got it normal, let's go to Sport Plus. So you can see the RPMs, the tachometer, looks different. So you can focus on the shift point, right? And your red line. Let's go to track. Now it's even more different. Uh, it does away with some stuff and really focuses on the speed, the gear you're in, and your RPMs is the primary focus now. And then drag strip, basically same thing. Uh, your your main focus is your RPMs and speed and your gear. Snow and wet, this go, takes you back to a normal style. And same thing with normal, it's just a normal screen. Which still is perfect. For me, I think this is great. Uh, these are the things that you really need to glance at and look without having to hunt for them or squint your eyes. It's a very large speedometer and you can see what gear you're in. Very, very large black background, white lettering, very crisp and sharp. When you're focusing on the road and then you transition your eyes down to the gauges, being able to see exactly what you need to see briefly with a fraction of a second without having to hunt for it or refocus your eyes or anything. Really, really good designed uh, gauges. So the gauges are near perfect. The spirit steering wheels near perfect except for the buttons but as far as feeling the steering wheel the stiffness of driving you can you can customize that so just changing the drive modes you can that's how you change uh, the setup for that but here on the on the steering wheel remember these buttons here and these buttons you have this little Mustang here you have the settings so we have settings we have Mustang and then we have some controls here so if I go here Right now, we, I have on the settings, when I push settings, it shows trip, fuel, info. All right, so we have that in the center. So I can scroll up and down to get some more vehicle information. So trip one, trip two, fuel economy, 
and tire pressure, okay? So trip one, so you can see it shows the average miles per gallon, how many miles has been driven on that trip, also a timer. So there's two of them, so you can reset those independently. And then you can see real-time fuel economy as well as an average. There's your tire pressure or a blank screen. Okay, so that's how you do. You push the settings and then it's right there at the top. Uh, you can go into your driver assist uh, features here and select the ones that you want to have on or off. Speedometer, we can change that to kilometers per hour. Per hour. Advanced settings, uh, vehicle, your key, and your display setup. You can do all that. All right, let's go back out of that. And let's go to the little Mustang here. So when we push the Mustang, we can um, change the, remember we had, when I pushed the drive modes, it changed the, the appearance. Well, we can customize that if we wanna have that change the drive mode or we can keep it normal, we can keep it sport or we can keep it track. So we don't have to change it every time. You can just have it the way you want it in any mode. So I think that's pretty cool. But I like to change it with the drive mode just so I can see what drive mode I'm in. Kind of reminds me or whatever. Uh, so my mode, so you can um, show status. So it shows information here, what's going on with the engine and everything. All right, let's go here to exhaust mode. So we can have quiet, normal, sport, and track. Now quiet isn't that quiet and track isn't that loud. It's just a subtle difference between the the, these four. Um, the, definitely the track is a little bit louder, but it's still pretty loud even in quiet. It has a nice rumble to it. It's not obnoxious. It just sounds awesome. And I think the exhaust is half of the fun driving this vehicle. It sounds really good and you can just, you know, shifting gears and everything, just you hear the exhaust note, you know, right when to shift or when you want to shift. You can downshift. It has, uh, speaking of that, it also has the um, rev matching. So we go down here, track apps, performance shift indicator. There's rev matching, so it's turned on. Uh, you can turn that off if you'd like. And you can see the my color. That's where you can check that night video showing how to do all that stuff. Then you have a launch control in which you can adjust the RPMs for that. I'm not drag racing or anything, so I don't have... Uh, a need for that right now, but I like to just drive the vehicle. All right, so the track apps. So you can go in here and adjust, choose the ones that you want. So let's say you want uh, acceleration timer, zero to 30, zero to 60, all that cool stuff. Brake performance, uh, 60 to zero, 100 to zero. Let's see if anybody's So that hasn't been done before me anyway. I haven't done that either. Uh, line lock. So this is where you can, this is track use only basically. Um, but it, you see it, notice it changes the view of the screen here. All right. Performance shift indicator. Uh, you can have a tone that makes a sound um, or you can have a shift light or you can have a shift point and you can adjust the shift point uh, to whatever you want but anyways there's a lot of features here with the little mustang button and the settings here that you can go into and customize the screen and um, you know kind of set up the way you want also the whole acceleration and braking timer uh, is all pretty cool you also have a go into gauges show gauges all right so this is where we have inlet air temperature cylinder head temperature air fuel ratio vacuum inches of vacuum this is fantastic and voltage you also have a g-force meter here that's really cool so as you're driving so you can see uh, the max it shows just what basically what the max the vehicle has had until it's been reset so that's pretty neat and of course, it, you know, this has the choice of a blank screen as well. So you have a lot of information that you can pull up here on the screen when you want it, when you need it, or whatever. Really think it's fantastic. Just in general, just using it. Every screen is perfect in that it has 
the stuff that's want to focus on all the time while you're driving very large and clear the customizable colors is just like icing on the cake it's really nice okay so here's some actual physical gauges so you have oil pressure and an inches of vacuum so uh, this is typically inches of vacuum um, is a way it's like a diagnostic tool typically um, but in this case actually incorporated this, this is the only time I've seen me personally seen a vacuum gauge factory on a car and I think every car should have this um, you can like in my case I've used the vacuum gauge to set the timing and uh, diagnose all kinds of problems I made some videos in the past about this where you can uh, diagnose valve problems with this and all, all kinds of things you can just see the overall general health of your engine uh, that needle at an idle like this should be th between 18 and 22 and you can see it's right in that range so it's rock steady needle as well so if the needle is not is moving around like that or something then you get know you got an issue so it's rock steady it's within that healthy range um, but as you drive as your accelerator opens up more airflow the the vacuum goes down so cruising speed will be much lower uh, but yeah vacuum gauge is fantastic having one right there so you can check it out while you're driving i think that's so awesome okay so here's your touch screen so you have icons here across the bottom there's your radio climate control your phone navigation you have apps find mobile apps you can also have apple carplay android auto by plugging in your phone to the usb port it has a really good sound system play as you when i first got in it i was like uh, the low volume it wasn't all that great but as soon as i cranked it up it really came to life so you want to really give it a little bit turn the volume up just a little bit it, then it becomes a much better radio than than at low volumes so it has a traditional volume and tune through the stations knob in chrome and nice good size easy to find and you can't confuse those with anything else and then you have physical buttons here you can turn the radio off change the tracks adjust your um your radio sound play and pause all those are handy and then here's your climate control you have the temperature for your driver and passenger in which you can sync those uh, like I have them now where they're both the same temperature fan speed and all that stuff now you can have you can see on the climate here on the screen you have control up here but you also have the physical buttons it's a little bit redundant but it's good in a in a good way so that way you can um, you don't have to go into the screen every time you want to make a fine-tune adjustment on your climate control which is pretty much all the time remember the start button that's to start the vehicle and turn it off this is your four-way flashers now this is your traction control when you turn this off you can see it's on now let's go ahead and turn it off it'll let you know here um, so when you do this your vehicle will spin tires so if you want to spin tires then you turn off the traction control this is to adjust your steering, uh, the stiffness of your steering wheel. So you have normal steering, sport steering, comfort steering. And those are the three. Now the, the sport steering is a little bit stiff. Normal is really, really good and comfort still good. It's not like too easy to turn. You still have a very good connection with the road and you have a good feel of the, in, of the vehicle. Um, and it's, the steering's perfect on a side note with the steering it's very precise you don't have to move the steering wheel very much in the vehicle turns so just very small movements is all you need and it's very very precise and really fun to drive and there's your drive mode where we're cycling before 12 volt power supply and there's your USB import input there and the little storage compartment I guess that's where you can put your cell phone if you use Apple CarPlay Android Auto and here's your shifter really comfortable shifter it feels good it looks good it's uh, it doesn't stick up too high so this is first gear reverse is to lift this up and all the way over here and push it up two things will happen your parking sensors will turn on and your backup camera will pop up here you have active guidelines that show where your tires are going to land as you back up and a visual indicator for your backup camera now this is in the very center position so you're, there's no distortion or anything there's no 
uh, misunderstanding where you are in relationship to other other things. Uh, really, really good backup camera. The resolution is adequate. Um, the visibility is near perfect. Really good. You can also get a top-down view, uh, more precise in the very center portion. But this right here. Also, you notice it's not too stretched out. It's not too distorted. It's not too wide angle. It's perfect. It's wide enough to where you have good visibility, but not too distorted and, and weird looking. All right, so there's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And it shows you what gear you're in right there on the screen. So there's no guesstimating. You know exactly what gear you're in at all times. I love that. Here's some cup holders. This open the, here in the center portion, so you can use this for more than just cups. This one's a little bit deeper than this one. Here's your handbrake parking brake. Now I notice when I release it, when I first got in the vehicle, I'll just kind of drop it, and sometimes it will not go all the way down. You just kind of have to like, you know, push it with your hand just very slightly. It'll go all the way down. Otherwise, it'll let you know, hey, um, we're not the parking brakes engaged. It'll give you a, a little chime and an indicator there on the screen. Um, but just had it just. You know, just kind of quickly drop it, and it wasn't quite all the way down. I just had to give a little bit of a push. Okay, so here's your armrest, and it's a little bit kind of far back, uh, but it does have a compartment in it when I lift it up like so. It's soft touch, and it's pretty soft. It's not like, it's kind of spongy soft, and it has a property line there in the center, which I don't think is big enough to share with your passenger. Um, but if you do share with your passenger, you got to make sure they don't go over the property line there. And then this lifts up. The latch is here on the side, and then you lift it up, and it's spring-loaded so it doesn't flop down on you. There's a place to put a pin or a tire gauge or whatever there. And then you have a 12-volt power supply and USB input, a place to put some change, and it's illuminated as well. Which I point that out in the night video. Even this is illuminated, your USB input. And there's places for wires to go in and out of the compartment right here. So the rear view mirror is an auto dim rear view mirror. And it has a light sensor here on this back side here. So at nighttime it will, so I'm going to put my finger over it. And it's starting to darken up a little bit now. And then when I let it go, let the light on it, it'll go back to normal. It has these tap lights up here. They're just standard bulbs, uh, nothing special. You, put, you know, might want to upgrade them to USB bulbs if you want. Um, we, I show those in the night video as well. A little clip here in the visor. The visors are cloth. You can see they have the light or the mirror. Two, two lights look like standard bulbs as well. Home link garage door opener control. Okay, so let's look at the visibility. Uh, see, straight out the back is fine. Without any rear passengers, you can see great. And over my shoulder, uh, since it has that window there, I can see good in my blind spot as well. It's kind of hard to see from the camera position, but looking at the mirrors, the mirrors are kind of small. You're going to have to get used to them, but you can see pretty good. Overall, I think the visibility is fine. A lot better than my car. Now it does have the backup camera, the parking sensors, the blind spot detection system, all that stuff to help you out. Rear cross traffic alert helps you out in all those ways. Okay, so thank you for watching and check out my night video and test drive on this vehicle. This is fun to drive. It sounds good. It looks good. And I'm very impressed with it. So thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.